Can Christians use self-defense in times of danger? Believe it or not, the Bible has some principles we can apply on self-defense. People during the biblical times may not have known martial arts or had guns, but Jacob did know wrestling. And the people in the Bible also had swords back then. In this episode, I'll be focusing on five Bible verses that can guide us in the topic. And stick till the end because all of these principles have to be applied. So if these things interest you, then stay tuned. Hello friends and family. I'm Hannah of Hope and Future Bible Devotions, giving you encouragement and godly wisdom with Bible context and life application. So welcome, and if you're new here and that's what you're looking for, consider subscribing. Is it okay for Christians to fight back in self-defense? A lot of people use certain scriptures to say that we should not. One verse that is used is Matthew 5, 39 to 41. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. The slapping of the cheek part here doesn't need to be literal. We use that term these days. When someone tells us something that seems offensive to us, we would say, well, that was a slap on the face. The context of this passage was that Jesus was giving a Sermon on the Mount, which was addressed to Christ followers. The mission of a Christ follower is to win souls, to fish, to bring unbelievers to belief in Jesus. Jesus encouraged the believer to go the extra mile so that others would want the God that we have. The next passage is again from the Sermon on the Mount. That is Matthew 5, 44. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Jesus tells us not to retaliate. This is related to someone who may be insulting you, saying bad things about you, cursing at you, and the like. Now let me be clear about these two passages that we just read. The heart behind Jesus saying this is love toward the lost. But... It's a different scenario when our lives or the lives of our loved ones and friends are actually in danger. Some people believe that Christians are pacifists, meaning we don't want anything to do with war or violence. But here's a passage to look at. Luke 22 verse 36. He said to them, But now, if you have a purse, take it, and also a bag. And if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. This was Jesus telling the disciples what to pack when they had to travel because they will be facing hatred and persecution. Also, in Judea, there were a lot of robbers and cutthroats. So that's what the sword was for, for self-defense. And Jesus told them to have them ready. Now that doesn't mean that they're going to flaunt their swords or they're going to threaten people if they would do anything bad to them. But Jesus just told them to be ready to defend themselves when the time was proper. Pretty much like us now. If I had the time to take up jujitsu classes, I would. But there are numerous times on the news that someone who knew martial arts was able to hold down a suspect until the cops came. There are people who have a concealed weapon too, so that when some crazy person starts to do the unthinkable at a supermarket or a mall, that evil would be put to a stop. Now, we might get confused with this next one, but let's check it out because it's pretty important. Now, when Jesus was getting arrested and Peter used his sword in self-defense, it says in Matthew 26, 52, Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Um, so what's the real deal? Here's the thing with that particular event. Jesus already gave a warning to the disciples in the past that he was going to be arrested and he would have to die for everyone's sins. And this was that moment. With Peter drawing his sword, he was acting with violence unnecessarily. Jesus was following the will of his father and Peter was standing in the way of that. Also, Peter was unwise in his response. Before this incident, Peter was falling asleep instead of praying with Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yet, he was willing to draw his sword and cause violence. This just shows that we can't just be holding a weapon and act on impulse because there are consequences. We could harm the wrong person or we could end up in prison. We have to be wise and stay sober. Now, this next one is the most important passage on the list. I believe that is. Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. 
We can have a whole other Bible study about the armor of God, but I'd like to emphasize the last weapon in this passage. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. These verses have to do with Christian life in general, when facing temptations or anything that is of this world. Based on the study of self-defense, if there is anyone that is most qualified to defend the weak and the troubled, it would be the person with a strong faith in God. And of course, he has to have the proper training. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Bible, is what directs our thoughts toward God's principles. We got to stay alert, be in prayer, and apply it even in tense situations. So what are your thoughts on the topic? Should we exercise self-defense? I want to know, so comment below. Aside from exercising self-defense as a Christian, maybe you've also thought about listening to secular music as a Christian. Go ahead and check out this video. Or you can check this one out too. In God, we have a hope and future. Keep your eyes on Jesus.